Good morning, and thank you for attending. I'm Consul Akhil Mukin, and I'll be your moderator for this news conference. Uh, we are here today regarding an attempt murder investigation, which occurred during the evening of Wednesday, November 7, 2018. This investigation is being conducted by officers from our 11 Division Criminal Investigations Bureau. Superintendent Heather Raymore, the officer in charge of 11 Division, will be providing details about this investigation. And after the update, Detective Sergeant Jim Kettles will take a few of your questions during a brief question and answer period. After this conference, Detective Sergeant Kettles will be available for individual interviews. As in any ongoing investigation, some details cannot be shared to ensure that any future court proceedings are not compromised and to respect the privacy of the victim. A media release will be issued shortly after the conclusion of the news conference and will include links to all of the information provided today. A full video of this conference will be made available on our YouTube page and that can be accessed uh, from our website at peelpolice.ca. Now I would like to turn the microphone over to Superintendent Heather Raymore. Good morning, everyone. We invited you here today to discuss an ongoing attempt murder investigation that began in November of last year. We're in a position to share some key pieces of evidence with members of the community in the hope that someone may recognize the suspect or have some information that will assist us in identifying him. Let's begin with the details of the case. On Wednesday, November 7th, 2018, the suspect, posing as a delivery man and carrying a large box, attended the front door of a house on Bayberry Drive in Mississauga. <clears throat> when the victim answered the door, they had a brief conversation. Seconds later, the suspect shot an arrow at the victim from a crossbow that was concealed inside the box he was carrying. The suspect is believed to have fled on foot to a dark colored pickup truck that was parked nearby. After being struck by the arrow in the chest area, the victim suffered massive trauma that was both life-threatening and life-altering. This was not a random act. Comments that were made to the victim by the suspect indicate that the victim was targeted and that the suspect may have carried out the attack at the request of another individual. It is clear that this attack was meant to end the victim's life. I would like to draw your attention to the TV monitor beside me. We're going to show you video, video from the surveillance camera on the victim's front porch that shows a portion of the actual attack being carried out. You'll see that the suspect was wearing a glove, a baseball style cap, and possibly some other head covering under the cap. The suspect made no effort to disguise his face and investigators have been working to obtain the best possible images of him. We are confident with assistance from the public and with current facial recognition technology, we will bring those responsible for this attack to justice. We have on display a crossbow and arrow that we believe is similar to the type of weapon used by the suspect. This type of weapon is commonly used by hunters to kill large game, such as moose and deer. A canvas of the area uncovered video footage that suggests the suspect may have arrived in and left the area in a dark colored pickup truck. We are also seeking the public's assistance in identifying the pickup truck and its owner. A team of dedicated investigators is working hard to identify and apprehend the person or persons responsible for this crime, but we need your help. If you think you can identify the person in this video, or if you have any other information that you feel may assist with this investigation, please call Peel Regional Police. Our direct tip line is 905-456 5840, or if you want to remain anonymous, you can call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. 
Detective Sergeant Jim Kettles is with me to help answer any questions you may have surrounding this investigation. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will, uh, I'll now do my best to answer uh, any questions that you have in relation to this. To our knowledge, uh, this isn't the first time that a uh, crossbow has been used in, a, in an attack of this nature, but certainly in our region, uh, I'm not aware of any other instances where, uh, where we've had a uh, similar, uh, similar attack carried out. The victim spent several months in hospital. Um, she will be recover she'll be in a recovery phase for the rest of her life, uh, as was stated by the superintendent. The uh, injuries that she sustained were, uh, were absolutely devastating. Uh, it involved damage to a lot of her internal organs. Um, so she's gonna be, as I said, she'll be in a recovery phase for the rest of her life. Uh, she'll be still undergoing, uh, undergoing medical treatment for her injuries, and uh, her life will never be the same. Correct. That's, that's to cover up what, what's inside. And I've never seen that before. I don't know if that's something you know, very, very disturbing. The other part of it I want to ask about after you explain that is that the door closes. Is that the victim that's able to close the door or is there somebody else in the house that she can tell us? Certainly. So with respect to your first question, uh, the items that you see to my right, the, uh, the crossbow and the arrows, uh, as well as the box, those are not the actual items that were used in the attack. These are items that we've obtained that were similar to the ones used by the uh, perpetrator of this attack. Um, and, and they're for display purposes only and just to, uh, just to provide some context as to, as to how this attack was carried out. Um, I would speculate that the box um, may have been for concealment of the weapon, although uh, I don't have any firm information to suggest that that's why the box was used. That's, that's my own opinion. Was that the attack? Because you said, uh, uh, the superintendent said that this is part of the attack. Is that it right there? You, what you are seeing on the monitor is the actual event. That's the actual event that you are seeing on the monitor beside me here. So the box, uh, even though you're using careful language, you can see his hand there. It's we're taking a leap that, that that's concealing it, and that's the attack. That, that it didn't, the crossbow didn't come out of that box. It was used later. That's, that's it right there. That's correct. The, the crossbow was never removed from the box um, during the attack. What, what we believe is that his, his right arm was inserted through a hole uh, in the box, and we've, we've tried to recreate that uh, to my right. His right arm was inside the box through a hole, and he would have used his right hand to trigger the crossbow to fire the shot. The, you mentioned the vehicle. Was there somebody in the vehicle? We don't know that at this point in time. We're open to that possibility. Uh, he may, the suspect may have attended with another individual. However, uh, this is something that we're attempting to, uh, to establish. Uh, again, tricky area, but um, you, you, you've uh, indicated that it looks like a targeted case, perhaps a professional hire, that kind of thing. Um, maybe you could uh, talk about that a little bit and perhaps even a little further about if you have some sense of why somebody would target this house and this Certainly. So, yes, we do believe uh, that, indeed, this was a targeted attack. Uh, the reasons for that are uh, to do with the conversation, the brief conversation that occurred between the victim and her attacker. The fact that the victim, although she got a clear look at her attacker, she did not know who this individual was. And as I said, particularly with respect to the 
conversation that took place between them. And of course, of course, I can't get into the substance of that conversation, but these are some of the things that lead us to believe that this was most definitely a, a targeted type of attack. Completely. The victim has been completely cooperative with this investigation. And we're doing everything we can to support her right now. Um, she's in a place of safety. And uh, as I said, she, she'll continue to, uh, to have a struggle ahead of her to try and get back to her new normal uh, with the injuries that she's sustained. We don't know that at this point. However, we're taking no chances, of course, and uh, we're ensuring her safety. What do you say about motive? Uh, why somebody might want to kill her? That still forms a part of the investigation. There are potential motives that, uh, that we have establish, uh, established, and I can't speak to those at this point in time. As, as I said, it still forms part of the investigation. We are open to, we're open to anything at this point, and we're looking at all possible uh, investigative avenues as to why this attack may have been carried out. In your experience, um, the superintendent's experience, in my experience, I haven't seen this before, this style of thing. It's very, very terrifying. Um, a person doesn't have a chance. That's, that's correct, Joe, I would agree with you. And uh, there's absolutely no question in our mind that uh, the intent in this particular case was that the, uh, um, the victim was not to have survived this attack. Is it safe to say, and I'm trying to tread lightly on this, that you, you think that this person would have been hired so that there may be more than one suspect that you're looking for in this act? That's certainly a possibility. Uh, we, we don't know at this point uh, how many people may have been involved in, in orchestrating this. Uh, again, that still forms part of the investigation and uh, that's, that's an important, um, important aspect of the investigation that we're trying to establish right now. So we're open to all possibilities. And again, I, I think that calls for speculation. I, I could only speculate on why. Um, whether it was a question of the, the fact that a crossbow is perhaps a lot more silent than a gun. And again, I'm just offering up uh, opinion and speculation here. I don't know the answer to that at this point. You might have answered it and I missed it. Was there anybody else home when this happened? No, the victim was home, home on her own, and um, just to get back to one of the questions you asked before about the door closing, that was the victim who managed uh, to close the door, um, and she did also manage to call 911, and uh, at that point, uh, EMS was activated and uh, she was brought to a trauma center. His face, uh, just based on the, the video and the images, you see, the images that you see, uh, his face does not appear to be covered. And the, uh, the information that we have is that his face was not covered. He is wearing a, he's wearing a cap um, on his head. It's, it's somewhat distinctive in its design. And I would actually ask anybody taking a close look at this photo, just to pay particular attention to the, to the cap that he's wearing. Uh, the design is somewhat distinctive. We don't have a, a make or, or any logo that we, that we can be certain of on the cap. And whether or not, as you can see in the photo, whether or not he may or may not have some kind of head covering underneath the cap, again, it's, it's difficult to say with any degree of certainty. And the other thing I would draw your attention to as well are the, uh, the shoes that he's wearing. And I would encourage people just to pay particular attention to, to all, all, of these, uh, all of these pieces in the photo. Because uh, perhaps the face, the face on its own, although that may not trigger anything, perhaps in conjunction with the cap that he's wearing, 
and the shoes that he's got on, that just that may mean something to somebody. No, there, there is no degree of licensing. Anybody uh, over the age of 18 can purchase one of these weapons at, uh, at any sporting goods stores that, that happen to carry them. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Detective Sergeant Kettles will be available for individual interviews if you uh, do require them, and we'll have all the items uh, remaining on display uh, again if you do need them. Thank you for coming. Thank you.